I think it's a really cute one with the uh, chemistry cat here, <laughs> especially because they drew the little uh, dinosaurs here. But okay, we'll talk about uh, actually radioactivity and some of the equations we're going to need. It's important just to remind ourselves again, just to remember, what's an alpha particle again? Oh yeah, it's a helium-4 atom. You need to know that. What about beta? Remember, there's two different kinds. There's beta plus and there's beta minus. So let's do maybe the minus one first. We'll do a zero like this. And this one here, this beta plus goes like this. And don't forget, whenever you have a beta particle, though, you always have a little neutrino coming in. So you have a little electron neutrino. And which one gets the anti one? It's this one right here. So this one here is an electron plus an anti-electron neutrino. And this one over here, this is actually called a positron. So it's a positron plus an electron neutrino. And finally, we have a gamma, which is just, a, well, I mean, we don't really do much with it. We just write a little zero and a zero, because remember, it's just a photon. Okay, and let's not forget about these uh, exponential decay curves. So this one right here, for example, either n, this could be like the number of particles, or it could be the activity, it could be the mass, whatever. But if we start off at some initial amount here, then this curve is exponential. So it's, an, uh, it's a negative exponential here. And what does that mean? Well, that means at a certain time, t one half, you've got exactly half of what you started with. And then if you go another one of those times, or twice that, then you've got half of a half, and so on. That's why it's called a half-life. So we've got something called the decay constant, and it's given by this Greek symbol, lambda. That's annoying, because you might think that lambda is the wavelength, but the lambda is not equal to the wavelength, okay? For your exam tip, just watch out for that right there. That's really important. Now this one right here, this is the piece here, that's the definition that you need to know. So this right here is the definition of a decay constant. So what is that? It's the probability of getting a decay in a given time. So for example, it's the probability of getting a decay in a second or in a year or whatever. Now this holds true for small values of uh, a lambda t it's called. And this right here is uh, what we're going to be doing here. And you're going to need to memorize this definition right here. It shows up often enough on exams. Now let's dig a little bit deeper with these equations. So first let's deal with the exponential equation, like the, the main one. This is the one I use the most often. So it's n equals n0. And remember, n is going to be the, for example, the final amount or the final mass or the final number of particles. And n0 is going to be the initial, so it's what you start with. So n equals n0. Remember we said it's exponential, so that means we use this exponential function e to the minus lambda t. This is the equation that you get on your data booklet. Now we have a version as well that uh, links it to activity. So it turns out the activity is related to n by just this multiple of lambda. So you multiply lambda times n. What that means, well, I can just take this equation then and just put a lambda in front of it. So it's lambda n zero e to the minus lambda t. And finally, we have the equation for half-life. So we're going to write t one half, that's the half-life. And it's equal to natural log of two divided by lambda. So about the units, well, everything here is okay. The time, it can be in seconds or in years or days or minutes or whatever. The decay constant then is going to match the time. So in other words, the decay constant, if you had uh, time elapsed in seconds, then it'll be decay constant in seconds to the minus one and so on. Activity, uh, that's done in decays per second or becquerels. That's this unit of uh, measurement here. That's a decay per second. And then half-life, well, it'll depend. It'll either be seconds or days or minutes or years or whatever. Now, a good exam tip for you is this right here. First of all, you need to know how to derive this equation right here. This would be a very, very good idea if you knew how to actually derive this one. And also, make sure you know how to solve for the time in the exponential. In other words, up here, if you needed to get t by itself, you need to know how to algebraically get there. Well, let's learn how to derive this half-life equation. So we're going to start off with this uh, main one right here for n equals n0 e to the minus lambda t. And we're going to define, remember, the half-life is the time to get half the original mass or activity. So we're going to start from just these ideas, and we're going to get to that equation. So step one, I think it helps to recognize that, well, hey, hold on. At t1 half, you have the an amount uh, remaining is actually half of what you started with. That's the definition of a half-life. Well, that means I can just write something down and I can say, okay, at t one half then, I can say that n is going to equal n zero over two. It's going to be half of what you started with. So that means that I'm going to take this equation and just replace this. I'm going to replace t with t one half. 
Okay, they're gonna, this one's gonna replace in there. And instead of n, I'm gonna say n0 over two. So this one here, this n is gonna become n0 over two. That's all I'm gonna do, okay? So watch very carefully. Instead of n, I'm gonna put an n0 over two. Okay, so there we go, n0 over two. That's gonna equal n0 times uh, e to the minus lambda, and this is gonna be t one half. Now here's the good news, at least, these n zeros cancel out. I can divide both sides by n zero and they're gonna cancel out. So in the end then, I end up with this. I end up with one over two equals e to the minus lambda, and I have t one half. Now what am I gonna do now? Well, I wanna to try to solve for t one half. To do that, I gotta get rid of the exponent. Do you remember the rules for this right here? You take the natural log of both sides. Natural logs undo e. Okay, so I'm gonna take the natural log of both sides. Okay, so if I do that, let's see then. So I go natural log of one half equals, and remember what natural log does to an e? It undoes it. So that means if I take the natural log of e to the something, it just means it's like this piece right here just drops down. So it's minus lambda t one half. Okay, it's looking better. We got rid of the exponent. But now I gotta deal with this natural log here. So you remember your rules of natural logs here that natural log of a over b is gonna be the same thing as just natural log of a minus the natural log of b. Okay, so I'll keep going then. So that means I'm gonna do natural log of one minus natural log of two. Of course, that's still equal to that same minus lambda t one half. What can I do now? Well, I can recognize that natural log of one is just zero. Well, if that's the case, then I can just cross it off and I end up with then just minus natural log of two equals minus lambda t one half. Now I can multiply both sides by uh, negative one. That's just gonna get rid of them. So then I just have uh, natural log of two, let's just say equals lambda t one half. And then I'm gonna get t one half by itself. So I'm gonna say t one half equals, and I'm just gonna divide both sides by lambda. So I get natural log of two over lambda. Hooray, and that's our equation. We've actually derived it from first principles, basically. So we've just shown where it came from. It's a good idea to be able to try out the math here and do the natural log. It's a good experience, at least, just to feel more comfortable with these exponentials. So we have a sample of cesium-134, and it initially has uh, this mass here. So 4.7 times 10 to the eight grams. If that's the initial mass, I can already label that as N0. That's the initial amount. It has a half-life of 2.1 years. Ooh, that's T1 half. It's useful. And what's the decay constant? Remember what that is? That's lambda. Well, I may as well use my equation then. So I'll say, all right, t one half is just going to equal to uh, natural log of two over lambda. Well, that means lambda then is going to be equal to ln two over t one half. So I can just move this one to the left. I can move this one down. So that means I can say, ah, lambda is going to be natural log of two over t one half. Well, in this case, then, it's gonna be nice and easy. It's gonna be just natural log of two over, and what's the half-life? It's 2.1 years. And notice that my units, then, are gonna be years to the minus one, which is gonna work, so that'll be fine. That's what it's supposed to be. So let's do, uh, I need my calculator for this. Uh, so I'm gonna do a fraction and say the uh, natural log, where are you? There it is, whoops, I don't know what happened here. Okay, I did the wrong button. There we go. So this one here, and I want the natural log of two and all that divided by 2.1, that is, and I end up with 0 0.33007. Now to two significant figures then, I will say, uh, let's see here, so lambda equals approximately 0. Uh, well, 0.33. What are the units? It's years to the minus one. What is the meaning of this? What it means is, hey, the prob remember, the definition of a decay constant is the probability of a decay happening in that amount of time. So you can say, ah, the probability of a decay then is gonna be 0.33 each year. Now, we're supposed to find, uh, now we're sp supposed to calculate the time in years that it takes for the mass to drop to this amount. Okay, so this is actually gonna be my n value, this right here. Uh, what do I want? I want t. That's what I'm looking for. And I have everything else. Do you notice I have T1 half, I have lambda, I have N0, I have everything I need. So all I gotta do then is just uh, use this equation right here, which goes N equals N0 e to the minus lambda T. I'm gonna solve for T. That's all I'm gonna do here. So I'm just gonna do that. 
Okay, well, I think the first thing I'll do is I'll divide by n0, and I like to do all the algebra first, so I'll do n over n0. By the way, you could have just done this with numbers, it's fine. But I just like to practice this here. So I'm gonna, what am I gonna do now? I'm gonna take the natural log of both sides. Why is that? Well, it's because I want to get rid of the exponent, so that means I'm going to have natural log of n over n0. That's going to equal, well, minus lambda t. Okay, good, and I'm almost there already. I just want to get t by itself. So I'm just going to divide both sides by minus lambda. Okay, so I'm going to have natural log of n over n0 divide that whole thing by minus lambda. So although it looks really ugly, this is actually what I have to do, just put in all the numbers here. All right, so let me go ahead and do that. So I'll do t equals, let's see, natural log of, and I'll put in all these numbers, n, which is this one here, is 1.7 times 10 to the 7, all that divided by uh, n0, which was 4.7 times 10 to the power of 8. Okay, the grams will cancel out, and then I divide that by minus, and I'll use my one with all the decimals. I'll use my answer from the calculator, actually. So let me go ahead and do that. So I'll take my calculator and say, all right, good. Uh, I'll do a big fraction here. And I'll say, okay, give me the natural log of another fraction. And I'll say, okay, give me 1.7 times 10 to the 7. All that, divide that by 4.7 times 10 to the 8. And all that divided by minus uh, the answer. If I do that, I end up with 10.057. Now, what are the units of this? Well, this is going to be in years, and I want to do it to the right number of significant figures, so I'm allowed two, so I'll just say, uh, I mean, I guess I can just say 10, because this one here won't do any rounding. So I'll say, okay, so the t is approximately equal to 10 years. So what that means, then, it'll take 10 years for the mass to go from that initial amount uh, of 4.7 times 10 to the 8 down to 1.7 times 10 to the 7.